I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm also now broke, so that's fine. So, a couple of weeks ago, I saw this YouTube video, and I can't remember if the girl was Canadian or American, but wherever it was she lived, there were like 50 independent bookshops within an hour of where she lived, which is, in my opinion, the dream. So, she took part in this raffle, and basically what you had to do was you go to the, these different independent bookshops, you buy a book and by buying a book your name gets put into the raffle and if you win the raffle you then get money to spend in all of the bookshops all these independent 50 or so bookshops you can spend as much money as you want you get vouchers to spend in those which is great I was like well there's nothing like that around where I am but I live in the garden of England I live where there is prosperity and money and sunshine there has to be loads of independent bookshops and I could do a tour of them and make a video. I thought that'd be a really, really cool idea. And I thought, well, I'll try and squeeze in as many as I can into one day. It probably won't be all of them. And it wasn't. But I started doing some research and there are only 12 independent bookshops in the entire county, which is crazy to me. There are second-hand bookshops, there are antique bookshops, there are only 12 independent bookshops. And I thought, well, that's fine. 12's an easy number, I can get to 12. Um, then I ran into more issues. <laughs> so, like I said, we started with 12. Um, four of those bookshops were between two and three hours away from me. So I thought, well, I'm not going to bother having them on my list because I'm never going to get to all of those shops if I want to do it in a day. Um, one shop had closed down but for some reason still had a website and two were just closed so didn't get to see those ones. Um, and one of them was on a university complex and I didn't want to risk getting told off by security by pretending to be a student because I went with my mum so there's no way she'd have got away with it so we decided not to go with that one which meant that we had four bookshops in total in the whole day and I still managed to spend over £100. So, first I'm going to show you the clips of the things that I, I videoed of these beautiful, beautiful independent bookshops and then I'm going to show you what I spent my money on.
Um, okay, so the first shop I went to is the Margate Bookshop. She has only been in business for seven months and what first struck me about that shop was how boutique -y it was. It felt like a proper bookshop. You know, the, the, the TV version of a bookshop, the beautiful shelves, um, just everything about it, I loved it. Um, and we were kind of asking each shop, do they stock independent writers? So not writers that have been published by big publishing houses, some of them by independent publishers, but also self-published. Um, and really she was the only one that was kind of positive about that. A lot of the bookshops don't want to stock um, independent or self-published books for a variety of different reasons, and that's completely like their thing. It was kind of disappointing for me because I know that I work with a lot of independent writers, so not self-published, uh, self-published but not uh, like independently published necessarily. So I was hoping to kind of build a dialogue with them, but I'm not sure that's going to happen now. Um, but I bought two books from the Margate Bookshop. Um, the first one I bought is their Thanet Writers Anthology. So this is an anthology of short stories um, and poetry um, from writers in my area. This is the kind of thing that I want to create with my writers group from uni. I want to make a Moonrakers anthology. I did like the fact that it's got the foil title. It feels authentic. It feels like a real book. They've clearly put time and effort into this. Um, and I guess that for me is why it's such a shame that other self-published writers don't get the opportunity to see their books on shelves because actually it can be done properly even without an in like a publisher or someone to do it on your behalf. So that was the first thing I bought. Um, and the second thing I bought was Modern Nature. So I quite like the description of this. In 1986, Derek Jarman discovered he was HIV positive and decided to make a garden at his cottage on the barren coast of Dungeness. Facing an uncertain future, he nevertheless found solace in nature, growing all manner of plants. While some perished beneath the wind and sea spray, others flourished, creating brilliant, unexpected beauty in the wilderness. So I went to a wildlife workshop talk thing yesterday um, by Simon Pollard, who is a, a local writer and landscape gardener that I work with. And that was really, really interesting to me. So this kind of then fed into this. Um, I like the idea of it being um, more memoir-y than um, fiction, because I read a lot of fiction, so I thought maybe something out of my comfort zone. The fact that it's Dungeness, so that's only an hour or so away from me. Um, I thought that was really cool. So there was, a, there was a lot here. This felt quite homey to me. I feel like this is going to be a read that makes me cry. Um, which again is out of my comfort zone. I don't go out of my way to find books that make me cry, but I quite like the fact that um, it was natural, like the, the, the natural world as opposed to fantasy. I read a lot of fantasy. If, if ever there was a, the epitome of the opposite of what I would usually read, it's this. So I'm really hoping that I can challenge myself by reading this book. Um, and that's why I bought it. And plus I just thought it was a really beautiful front cover and really natural. So the next shop that I went to was Bundle of Books in Herne Bay. This is a shop that is specifically for children, so it's just a children's bookshop. They do activities and workshops and things with children. Um, they had loads of beautiful kids books um, and they very kindly gave me this tote bag to take with me, which I absolutely love. Uh, anyone who knows me knows that I'm a gothic nerd, so that really spoke to my soul. Um, again, I asked them if they had any local writers and they were able to give me the recommendation of two. So I bought The Secret Nightingale of Lucy Strange. Um, they had a couple of her books. Um, I think I picked this one up just because I liked the colour palette more than the other one, or I hadn't heard of this one, but I had heard of the other one. So uh, the synopsis of this one is, in 1919, Mama is ill. Father has taken a job abroad. Nanny Jane is too busy to pay attention to Henrietta and the other things she sees, or thinks she sees, in the shadows of their new home. All alone, Henry discovers that Hope House is full of strange secrets, a forgotten attic, ghastly figures, mysterious firelight that flickers in the trees beyond the garden. One night she vent ventures into the darkness of the Nightingale Wood. What she finds there will change her whole world. Now I've just finished reading the Hazelwood, which is in my TBR for November. So obviously at the end of November you'll see that in my uh, wrap up book, my wrap up video. Um, so that kind of, this seemed like a softer version of that. Um, and I'm quite excited to kind of uh, dive back into a dark and mysterious wood um, and learn some more stories. Um, and she, apparently she's um, based or 
uh, was around the Canterbury area. So again, that's not far away from me. So I thought that was quite cool. And then the other local one was Catherine Constable. Um, apparently she lives in London now, but she uh, started writing in the Herne Bay area. So I picked The Pearl in the Ice. She watched the whales alone and as she stood on the deck, she fancied she could send some part of herself down into the water and hear in the echoing cavern of the sea something astonishing. Again, I just thought that was an absolutely beautiful front cover. I don't read a lot of um, middle grade or younger books, um, but I wanted to get something that was local um, and younger than the YA that I usually read um, as a quick read and maybe as a present for friends, kids and things like that. But yeah, I just thought it was super cute. And then I actually bought a, another book um, from the Herne Bay shop. I wanted to get myself just a little something. Um, so I bought I Am Thunder um, by Mohammed Khan. Um, this was recommended to me by Ellie, who works there. I mean, she recommended me the other two books as well, but um, as something a bit more YA. Um, this is a kind of romance goes awry. So the synopsis of this one is... Masna Salim is used to being invisible, so no one is more surprised than her when Arif Malik, the hottest boy in school, takes a sudden interest. But Arif is hiding a terrible secret, and as they begin to follow a dark path, Masna faces an impossible choice. Keep quiet and betray her beliefs, or speak out and betray her heart. So I just thought that would be something. Again, I don't really read um, contemporary novels. I really need to just branch out and read different stuff. I used to read a lot of different things when I was younger. I would just absorb any book that was put in front of me. The older I got and the more I was writing, the more focused my, my reading became because it had to be something that would either benefit my writing or uh, be similar to what I was writing. And I think that's why for a long time I've really struggled to find a book that holds my attention. So I kind of went out today one to kind of promote local shops and try and uh, encourage people to buy locally but also to just buy stuff completely out of my comfort zone um, and as this was recommended to me by the uh, lady who owns the shop I'm going to trust that it's quite a good book and I'm quite excited to read it. So I then went to um, the Whitstable bookshop which is the one on Harbour Street. I only bought the one book from Whitstable but I just bought My Sister a Serial Killer. This was recommended to me by my sister-in-law um, I don't know if she's trying to make a point, uh, or whether she's a serial killer or I am, but uh, probably best not to ask. And then lastly, I went to uh, the Top Hat and Tails in Faversham. Um, Top Hat and Tails used to be just a hat shop, hand glove shop. Um, it's a really gorgeous boutique in the middle of Faversham. Um, she own. Come on then. Come on. She only recently um, started selling books uh, when she got involved in the Faversham Literary Festival and the person who was going to organise getting the books for the festival um, was unable to. So she stepped in and did it for her. Um, and then ever since then she's kind of had a nook in her shop for books. And what she told me is that every year, uh, every month or so, that nook grows a bit bigger. She's, she hasn't got a lot of space. So she, thank you, just smacked me in the face with your tail. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of space really she doesn't have a lot of space uh so she doesn't have any books out back or anything it's just a case of what you see is what you get but she had a lot of really interesting non-fiction and poetry um and a lot of local poetry um so when we asked her i didn't actually buy any poetry i'm not a massive fan of poetry but what i did buy she wrapped in lovely tissue paper for me which i'm now going to destroy yes i know you love tissue paper don't you dickhead Okay, there we go. You gonna? Oh, you you are, aren't you? You're gonna go and jump on. Will you just make a choice? Where are you gonna sit, baby? Hey? Where are you gonna sit? Thank you. Love you too. So I bought Angela Carter Wise Children. Um, I've never actually owned any Angela Carter. I studied Angela Carter a little bit when I was at school and really enjoyed uh, her style of writing. So I thought it's about time they actually owned some Angela Carter. Um, so I just bought the first Angela Carter that I saw. I don't think she had any others. It's got a dirty spine, not impressed, but still quite a cute copy. Are you posing next to the books, are you baby? Are you posing next to the books? 
And then I bought uh, Pat Barker's Silence the Girls. I read Regeneration at university and absolutely loved it. So I'm hoping, um, considering this was shortlisted, uh, that this is going to be as good, if not better. Um, so when the Greek queen Helen is kidnapped by Trojans, the Greeks sail in pursuit, besieging the city of Troy. Trapped in the Greek soldiers' camp is another captured queen, Briseis? Briseis? It's captured another queen, <laughs> condemned to bed, uh, uh, condemned to be bed slave to Achilles, the man who butchered her family. She becomes a pawn in a menacing game between bored and frustrated warriors. In the centuries after this most famous war, history will write her off. A footnote in a bloody story scripted by vengeful men, but she has a very different story to tell. So yeah, that's. That's all my books. I was hoping to get more um, bookmarks and things like that, but they didn't really have any. Um, the Margate place did, but I didn't really like them. They only had two or three. Uh, they didn't have many like bookish gifts at all. So mainly I just spent money on books today. That was kind of the takeaway from today, is if you go to an independent bookshop, you will spend money. So let that be a lesson to you, I guess. Um, I've been doing a Top Trumps TBR, so all of these books will be made into Top Trumps cards and put into my TBR um, because I've already got about 50 other books that I'd planned on reading um, and they'll probably go into the 2020 version as opposed to this year because I've only got two months left um, and too many books to read but I hope you enjoyed this video I am going to go and have a nap and by a nap I mean a nine hour sleep because it's late enough in the day that I could probably get away with it so have a nice day.